13 and verse 4. It's very clear what the Bible says. The reason why we are echoing this is because this God wants to restore. Yes. But He's saying, How can I restore when the foundations are faulty? There are some of you who are married now, and there are certain things that are happening, and you are endorsing what you are doing because your partner is doing it also. You came here and you didn't even know that was, this conversation is going to go this direction. You see, God is saying this. You two, two evils or two wrongs cannot make a right. The fact that he's doing it doesn't, doesn't endorse or doesn't give you the greatest to go ahead and do it. So, if you are married and you are saying, ah, but that talk is only for those who are not married. No, I'm, I'm, I'm married. Don't you know that there is something called adultery? Ah, pastor, these things are basic now. That's why God wants us to go back to his order. That's right. He wants to set the foundations clear before any other thing. Okay. Glory be to the name of yes. God. So when we say touch not, we're not only talking about singles. Yes, indeed, the law applies to you. And let me tell you, the God that we serve is the ancient of days. We say that to him when we worship him. We say, you change it not. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is not Gen Z. He's not about to change his mind. What he said before is what he's still saying now. Even though the society is telling you, uh -uh, right now we do not think kissing is wrong. How will you marry someone without knowing the person can perform? How can you do this and that? God's order says it is honorable with the bed undefiled. What that means is God's order is God's order and it's not about to change. It's not subject to election. It's not subject to your popular opinion. This is what God says. And if you are in a marriage covenant, you too have that covenant of touch not. Marriage is not a license to touch anybody. There is someone in this place. It's not. There is someone the Holy Spirit is blessed to me. I will, someone I can say just chance now, but this one you, you know is who I'm talking to. You are cohabiting with the person that you're in a relationship with. You are cohabiting, but let me explain. You are staying together. Yeah, you live together. In fact, we came from that house to this meeting. Yeah. We came from that house, we came from there. Listen to me. Sweetheart, we are not condemning you. It's not condemning we are, we, we, you. Someone is saying, ah, Pastor, you don't know what she's been through. You don't know what he's been through. You are just saying it because if, if only you know, that's the only way. Listen to me. God wants to give you his best only if you give the choice to him. That's right. But you see, you keep you keep settling for less because you feel that is the best you can have. Mm -hmm. God is saying his order means touch that. And you can start a new relationship with him after this meeting. But you the reason why you don't have the strength to be able to do it is because you have not completely yielded to his order. Right. We're going to pray with you tonight. And we're going to stand in faith with you. We're going to break that circle. There's and, and, the, and the, the person I was just talking about is not someone who is uh, new to the faith. You've been, you've been, at, you, you have, you've been on the block of Christian, Christianity for quite a while, so you understand what I'm saying. Glory be to you, Lord. Please don't leave here tonight without a touch from God. And the final point we're going to give to you before we pray and take your questions is: I think we should read it together. God's, God's, order love, of God's order of love is, is hands on. on. Talk to your neighbor, say hands on. Hands on. So so much, like you said, we should touch notes. Now and you are saying hands, hands on. on. What do you mean? Do you want to say something? And someone just laughed and said yes. So, in the area of touch not, we know what it means when it comes to our sexuality and what God demands of us. But in the area of marriage and relationships, getting into work, God's order is that our hands must be on the plow. Working. To be workers. Sustain. Getting into marriage is not the ticket to having your needs met. No. It is you signing up to work for another individual. Oh, let just me say lost, it just lost some people now. <laughs> marriage is not the is not is not where you go to reap being taken care of. Because I hear a lot of ladies say, I want to be taken care of. I, I want to be, you know, and then the guys say, I'm of age. Somebody needs to start cooking for me. Somebody needs to wash my clothes. Somebody needs to take care of my house. You can, you, can, you might as well move your mother into your house to do those things for you, or you employ a maid to do them. Marriage is not the place where you go to get your needs met. It's a place you go to work for another person. It is the height of selflessness. Because when you enter marriage, you don't go there with, I married a man of God, he knows what God has said he should do, so 
here am I, love me, as the Bible says. But what is my responsibility? And if I shift my focus from what he is supposed to do for me, and I shift my focus to what I am supposed to do, chances are that if both of us do that, that's when you see those marriages, you say, oh. It comes from two people whose hands are on deck. Working. We are rolling up our sleeves and we are getting to work. So marriage God in God's order is hands-on. We will be handy men, meaning we will change the light bulbs of our marriages. We will fix the sink if it's leaking. Right. We will get in there, we will enter under the car to change the tire. Right. If our marriage requires it, we will get down in the dirt and fix what needs to be fixed. Let me read the scripture for you. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Why would you wrap this up and begin to get to the place where we pray for some persons? Ecclesiastes chapter 4, from verse 9 to 12. If you have it, let's have it there on the screen. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Let's read together as loud as you can. One, two, read. Two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. The last word is what? Labor. Marriage is for two people working for themselves. Mm. The day you stop working for your spouse, you are still signing up for separation and divorce. That's right. You know, there are a lot of people who think if I can marry the perfect person, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. But I was teaching yesterday in the wedding and I said, if you buy a brand new car, the day you start using it, you, it stops being a brand new car. That's right. Is that right? That's right. The car now needs maintenance for yep. you to continue serving you. So even if you marry the best person, you need to work for the person to remain the kind That's of person best. for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says two are better than one, for they have a good reward. When it's only one person that is working, it's not a good reward. Mm. Now, someone can say, Pastor, but you know I'm the one that's always doing what is right. My husband is never doing this. My, not, my, my husband is not reciprocating. He's the one always on the other side. In fact, he brings out the worst out of me. By the way, before I complete what I want to say on that, if there's anybody here who is saying, your spouse bring out the worst out of you. It's not your partner, it is you. That's actually who you are. <laughs> when you say the worst out of you, that is that thing is inside of you, and that thing is inside you. The old partner only stand up the best that brought that thing. Tonight you can ask for help. That's right. For God to change whatever is bringing out the worst inside of yes. you. So let me complete my thought. You are here and you've been giving it to your marriage. It wasn't like that when you were dating, but now it looks one-sided. Let me tell you this. During the conference last year, we were reminded, if you are the one that God has, grace is sufficient for you. That's right. Bible says, if a woman marries a man who is unbelieving, yes. by her believing and piety, she can convert. Yes. Pastor, is that scripture for everybody? I think that some men have read that scripture and have become very abusive. Listen, From their chest, it's okay. God knows why and how you entered into that marriage. And for you to be able to find your place in destiny, Sufficient grace has been made available. That's right. I will say this and then we'll begin to wrap up again. Hear this. You actually thought that being married to that your spouse was going to end your proclivities to pornography. Mm. You got married. But and I'm, married to help and I'm talking to someone who is married here. You still find yourself in that space where you fiddle with your love, you, you are engaged in masturbation and all of those things. God's order for love that needs to be kindled this evening is that you say no to those things because those things are eventually harming and arming, they are harming you and arming the hearts of hell that I spoke to you about to fight against you. The Bible says, give the devil no foothold. Mm. That means that, you know, a foothold is the size of my foot. Mm. If you give him one foot, he will not take one foot. He will take a whole mile. Mm. Let not the gospel of Jesus or the kingdom of God suffer loss as a result of your negligence and your giving the enemy a foothold into your mind because you are still uh, entertaining certain toys in your home. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. I say glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. So, as we're getting ready to pray right now, the first set of people that we're going to pray, we're going to make this very quick. Listen, this whole event was put so that God can start a new order. Yes. He wants to rekindle certain things. He wants to fix. He wants to turn around. He wants to change. 
from the four things we talked about, I don't know which one got which one the Holy Spirit spoke to you about. I don't know amongst the persons that the word of knowledge came for. But listen, the people who are sitting by your side, they can't help you. So if you sit back on your seat and say, I am ashamed, ah, you are going to go back and the enemy will consistently keep having a feast on your life and on your family. But today, it can end. Glory be to God. I say today, it can end. I say today, it can end. Today, it is going to end. In the precious name of Jesus. We're going to hear pray for persons who feel that time has been lost. I've said it before. There's somebody who feels that your shelf life is gone. You feel age has caught up with you. Man, is not for you. Today, restoration is going to be spoken over you. And God is going to be coming through in the name of Jesus. Where you are right now, I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to pray. Shadi le fenu kabrantas kebele to ramane ya sandaba. Shapa pa pa ra ka pa tele mano se bele ya gamani ya to se bele ya. Shapa le guru puto se bele ya bali ya tala manash. Enka para te bele to se bele ka para te bele. Enta banda ke le prata sa pa ka banda. Ra be 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 le kobre te se bele ke beri da balade. Ra be 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 re ke bele to se bele ya kumanda. Eberika jada pada dele pada tu le pada ya kubaria ta shaba ba 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 riku da prate se pedi ya ku ra be 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 le kubaria ta la pada dia pada ku ta ba shaba ba 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 re be le kubrete le pada ta la pada sh e da braka ta pada tu se pedi ya ka pada te be le ta e da pada tu se pedi ka pada tu se pedi ya ka pada ta le pada. But somehow, somewhere, you have submitted your body. While everyone is going to be praying, I want to stand here and pray with you. As you are coming out, I'm going to be praying that God will restore. There's another set of people. Hear me, hear me. Sickness has been introduced into your body as a result of what you gave it to before. And you know that that sickness came in as a result. God wants to heal you. He wants to start that process of healing. But first of all, you have to come to him and say, Lord, have mercy on me for whatever it is that happened in the past. I'm ready for you to do that which you want to do for me. Do it my life in the name of Jesus. Where are you? The eye is already open. I'm waiting for you to come forward. I'm waiting for you to come forward. Don't be shy. This time is for you. Want to lay hands on you? Want to pray for you right now? Want to pray with you? Want to pray with you? Where it is that you are? In fact, the Lord is asking me. Everybody that is here, wherever, if you are under the sound of my voice, please, would you stand? Could you stand? Everybody please stand. Everybody please stand. Everybody please stand. Everybody please stand. Shabarego Badia Dalaban de Levado Shadabrana. Listen. I spoke to someone here about your sexuality. The Holy Spirit will want to do a walk, a quick walk in your life. Right now, right here, wherever it is that you are, we're going to stand in faith with you to end that cycle. I've mentioned three sets of people that we need to speak to that, that God wants to rekindle his order. Don't leave the service tonight with the same way you came in. God wants to do a quick walk in your life. As we pray and as we sing these songs, please come out so that we can stand and begin to pray with you right now in the name of Jesus. First set of people, sickness is in your body because of certain things. God wants to end it. Where it is that you are, please come forward. Let's pray with you right now. Don't leave here the same way you came. Don't leave here the same way you came.
you have been afraid that you are going to marry the wrong person. In fact, you are afraid that you are, your marriage is going to end in divorce. This one is twofold. You are already married and there is fear in your heart because of the way things are going. God can turn that situation around. The other said, you are already afraid, you are not married, but there is fear. Listen, perfect rule of cast out all fear. Whatever it is that you are, I need to come right now. That thing is not on God. That thing that is making you focus on failed marriages and making you feel that that is what you are going to experience. Tonight, there is power in the house to break that fear. You looked at your family, you looked at your dad, you looked at your mother. In your house, in your home, there is a cascade of failed marriages and you are afraid. Tonight, there is power to break that power of fear. Open your mind, open your mind. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you don't have much time. The next set of people, I mentioned it. I will not do it. I will 